All right, Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor for this opportunity as we come before your throne. Father God, we ask you to empower us through your spirit, give us direction, wisdom, knowledge that only you can do, Father God, from on high. Even as we go forth, Father God, give us direction and guide us to the way we need to speak this word to your people. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this night, for the time, this moment. In your precious and powerful and mighty name, we pray, Lord. Amen. Let's look at this word of God over here in the book of Luke, chapter 12. Well, God decrees over in Luke, chapter 12, in that particular uh, 16th verse, and Jesus commands the word, he spoke a parable to him, saying, The ground of a certain man, uh, a certain rich man, brought forth, uh, forth plentiful. In other words, it's, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about that, just about how he brought forth plentiful and how he just really trying to, he forgot about the fact who who would aid him to happen. You know, the word God talks about in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, um, but in the same measure, if you think about it, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul began to speak to them about the process of, you know, how he tried to feed them with, um, <clears throat> with milk, not with meat, because they still wasn't ready. But in the process, Paul and uh, Apollo got into a little dispute, and they got into that little dispute. Jesus came, well, God came on the scene and said, well, who are you, Paul, and who are you, Apollo? That y'all just men, mere ministers. One plant. One waters, but I give the increase. And it's the same thing when we look at this particular scripture. It goes in the 17th verse. And the Bible declares and decrees, and he thought himself, saying, What shall I do? What shall I do? Because I have no room to bestow my fruit. Now, this is a greed of a person who has nothing to think about selfishness. You know, God condemns selfishness. <clears throat> and most of us know that. You know, it's kind of like a person has a way to want to do what they want to do things the under way they undividedly um, um, the way God wanted done. They want to do it their way. So whenever you lean to what you feel is right and not what God thinks is right, and sometimes you come across abundance of wealth, the first thing you do, you don't want to give anybody anything. Most people don't. They don't think about the kingdom first. They take care of themselves first before they take care of the kingdom, or they cheat the kingdom. You know, give more to themselves and building their homes and houses, whatever left there, build them a church or whatever they have to be. And it's just the way some things happen. You see it all the time. But you can't do two at once. But the word of God comes over and he speaks over this particular um, 18 verse. And the Bible of God says, he said, and I will do, I'll pull down my barns. Look what this brother is doing. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build greater barns. That wasn't enough. They already have barns, but he couldn't keep the ground uh, the fruits of the ground, which Christ allowed the ground to bring forth the fruits, but he homaged it. He covered it for himself. And then we find ourselves in situations like that. Sometimes we come across abundance of income. We see people in our church or people in our neighborhood. People may need a donation. People need help. No, we go out and buy a new car, new home, new house. We don't even think about God. Matter of fact, we don't even get that part of the money that's supposed to be a seed to the church at all. And then we wonder why it don't come our way again. And we struggle. So the word of God talks about this we look at the first half of this particular parable again and you just want to break it down we're going to stop here at this particular uh, 18th verse and we're going to look at this process when he's talking about how he will um, in his, well in the 18th verse but we're going to stop from the eight, we're going to work with the 18th uh, stop at the 18th but we're going to work with the 16th down to the 18th and what God says over here and he spoke a parable unto him saying the ground of a certain rich man bought forth plentiful now as far as I understood you know the earth is God's, and he gave us dominion and supremacy over the earth. But at the same time, you know, God don't want us to be selfish in terms of storing up goods for ourselves. The Bible talks about moth and all these rots things, and they take it away. But, you know, we think about this particular area, just kind of look into it a little bit. The Bible says he spoke a parable saying that the ground of a certain man, a certain rich man, bought forth plentiful. Riches, and we're talking about rightly acquired yeah, in the terms of the blessing, really, riches from the ground is really required uh, in the thoughts of how God's supposed to take care of it. No, it belongs to him. So when we think about this in the right manner, if riches is required, it should be thought to be a blessing from God. If we receive anything from God, especially when it wasn't you, and maybe you went out and maybe acquired the riches, but you came out abundantly. You know, kind of opposite of story what happened with Ananda. You know, it's the same story pretty much in a way, but a different way. If an Ananias received, you know, you know, this this man received the same type of treatment that Ananias and Sapphira received over in Acts chapter four. 
the same, pretty much the same type of treatment. You know, we're talking about how they got proceeds and, you know, they didn't have enough. They felt that what they had to bring forth the kind of proceeds they make as they were gathering money. And God made a way for that proceeds that they was giving up. Get, you know, it doubled. It, it was more than enough. But during the course of time, when they had to hand in the proceeds to take care of, the, you know, the process of the temple, the church. You know, they held back, not knowing that God is the one who gave the increase. And that's the way it is with some of us. You know, word of God, you know, God speaks this parable in a, in a, in a way that, when we pray and ask God for blessings, and God blesses us, you know, we, we so stingy our hand will fall off. We don't want to use our hand to give out nothing to anybody. Especially when you give something to the church, give something to your friend or your family. You want to keep everything for yourself. If God gives you a million dollars a day, you'll probably get him a probably, I don't know, a quarter's worth. you probably get a church maybe a penny's worth. And you want to keep everything for yourself. Because when we think about this story, the fruits that was actually cultivated from the creator, which belongs to God. And he took it upon himself to harbor what God gave him rather than sharing it. It was God the one gave the abundance. And it's the same thing with you. God gives you the abundance. It wasn't anything that you have done, whether it be your business, whether you came across money, whether you come across a settlement or whatever. God saw fit to make sure that it was to come your way. And so when it came your way, you should be open-handed enough to take care of the things you need to take care of and thank God for blessing you with it. Because you know you've been praying for financial breakthroughs. And now that God gave you a financial breakthrough, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. But you don't hold your hand out to give nothing to anybody. Stingy is I don't know what. The Word of God comes over in this particular area of Scripture. And it says in the particular 18th verse, And he thought to himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room to bestow. Look. My fruits. Let's think about that 18th verse, that 16th verse again. The 17th verse says he has no room to store his fruit. But see, right there, he didn't figure out already who allowed the fruit. And sometimes we forget who allowed the blessings. Who is the resource that brought forth the blessing? And if the resource gave us the blessing, then it's no longer ours. We're just stewards over it. And then we do what God tells us to do with it. But when we begin to take it in such a way, we harbor it, we covet it. And then we ask God, oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Yeah, I thank you. But then you need to really take it and give out to other people who are in need. You know, I ain't saying you got to give everything out. But if God tell you to give it all out, then you give it all out because you didn't have it in the first place. You didn't have anything. And God bought forth. If he tell you to give everything out, then give everything out. Because, you know, if he calls it to come by once again, then he'll do it again. I thank God when my wife come across, you know, certain large sorts of money, we think to give to charity. We think to give to people. And a lot of times we give out um, uh, monies, amounts of monies to certain organizations, certain people, and we don't ever hear from them again. Not that we want to, but, you know, we, when we hand out certain things and give people things, and it kills me sometimes when we give a certain large money and money out to certain people, they begin to start speaking prophecies over us. You know, God's going to do this for you. God's going to do that for you. No, we're just going to give you a blessing, man. We don't need you to just go off and talk about, you know, what God said. God told me this, told me. We, we, we just gave you the blessing. You know, take it or receive it. All this is right What God, you know, all this stuff that people say. They make up all these, these synonyms. Just receive it and go your way. And the same thing you do for someone else when you get it. You get something. Pat, play it forward. So the word of God comes over in this area. I'll just pick the 17th verse. And he said, he said in the 17th verse, and though I, and, and, um, and he thought to himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to restore my fruits. Hmm. Anytime God gives you something that don't belong to you anyway. Maybe it's meant for you to, maybe God just using you as a transfer in the earth. So when he brings it to you, it's for you to give it out. Mm, some people don't think like that. So the Bible said the fruits uh, was given to him by God. And it's given to him by God, then it should be handled righteously. You know, it should be helped to get to those who helped the fourth going in the ministry. And that's what you, it's one of the parables talking about. The fruits have been given by God and should be used accordingly. But instead, you will heap them up to yourself, regrettably, not understanding what the purpose God gave them to you for. 
And this is we have a lot of hard times with people right now in this situation. With hard times going on, issues going on in people's life, people yet feel that when they come across a certain substance amount of money, they don't think that they're supposed to be able to still help people out. Now, don't you think if God gave it to you, he can give it to you again? You know, it's almost like, why would you hang on to something without moving it so something else can come in? And this is why the Lord can't trust a lot of people with riches. Because when they get them, they coverage it. They harbor it. Different programs is out here. Different people who had electricity problems, rent problems. There's organizations opening up for you to give into them. God give you $3,500. Hey, get somebody $500 of that money. See, I'm going to be one of the people that can help their rent. That's what me and my wife do here at you know, see Studios. We help people out. And if we can't, if we can't help them out, we just tell them we flat ain't got it. You know, our benevolence fund is out, you know. And if we can give something, we give. But we don't have it to give. We want, we're going to play it and shake it. If God brings something into us, we'll give it out. But if we don't have anything, ain't no sense of telling you it'll be here to be here. No, we wait when God says he's going to bring something. So we pray, Lord, that individual over in that foreign country or place is in need of this, that, and the other. And, Lord, if you see sufficient to bring it, Father God, we'll send it. And you and God holding you to your word. And you got to make sure that word is good. That if God's going to bless you with something to help someone, you have to make sure that it's not yours. It's what God gave you to distribute to that person in need. And that's the same thing that happened with Ananias and Sapphira. Is that what God told them? Was it not yours? You know, when, 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 when you sold it, was it not yours anymore? No, it wasn't yours. No, but why did you lie to the Holy Spirit to lie to you? You know, and the Bible said the wife, his wife got took out the door. And then the husband came along and spied along with her. Or he got took out the door first. And then the wife came and conspired along with him. And then she got took out also. So my question is this. If God blesses you abundantly like, with the, like he did with this man right here, why would you go store it up and keep it to showboat and buy things that only amount to nothing rather than helping somebody out who in need? Hmm. Kind of funny, ain't it? Well, let's look at the scripture a little farther here. Where it says over in the 18th verse, and he said, just what I do. Now, this is his own understanding about what he would do. Not that he come across this abundance of riches or fruits or whatever you have. But still, he's going to store it up, and he could just give it out because the ground is going to bring forth more fruit. So he's trying to build bigger barns. Or he's trying to cover much as he can. And the word of God goes down in the scripture and said, he's going to lay back and kick back and be merry. And he's not going to do anything that have attained the way he can be and help God out. And those helping his people. He's going to kick back, be merry, and have all the goods for himself. And that sounds like a really, good, a really grievous person. A person that's really, the Bible says, in here he says he's a fool. That really sounds like a fool. Knowing they didn't have anything, but when they came across something, they covered it. But in the first thing you do, cutting God piece right off the top and maybe still going blessing somebody else with it. And then you wonder why God's not bringing nothing your way. Because he knows your thoughts, how you're thinking toward it. There are people all around the world that are starving and needing things. Over in this minute, we got certain people calling us all the time just for 50 pound bags of rice. Sometimes we're able to send it, sometimes we're not able to send it. But the shipping cost is just as much. So we just rather send the money. And once it leave our hand, it's no longer ours. If they do wrong with it, then it's on them. Once something we have leave and go to a ministry that actually asks us for it, once it leaves our hand, it's no longer in our control. It's between them and the Holy Spirit. And if they misuse that, it's between them and the Holy Ghost. It's no longer mine anymore. Now the exchange comes between the dealing with them and the Holy Spirit. The word of God says over here, this man says in 18 verse, so I'll pull down my barns and I'll build greater barns. It's not that he didn't already have barns because now the ground has brought forth more fruit and now he want to store more up. Greedy, covetousness, like most people do. It's not that you already have a house that's good. When you come across a little bit more money, you want to get a bigger house. Greed. It's not that you already have a pretty nice car to ride around in. I want to get a bigger, more luxurious car. It's not that you don't have clothes on your back to wear. You want to get more 
beautified, more expensive clothing. Just let everybody know that you got it, you got it, and everybody's how they starve it. In other words, I give my old clothes away and buy me new clothes. Why not buy them the new clothes? And you keep the clothes you have. Person who needs rent, person who needs help with electricity. You know, you got electricity in your house. Some people can set on maybe two or $3,000, and they can't get $35 away or $40, $100 away for a person to pay rent or pay the, pay the light bill. And they're going to go out and spend it out, out to eat and try to be luxurized anyway. So sometimes you got to sacrifice a Sunday and really save up during the week. Rather than eating that sandwich or eating that hamburger or out there smorgasbording, take that money and put it in the cup. And see how much money you will come across and think that one day you can go take somebody out to dinner. Not only take somebody out to dinner, maybe give that money to charity. You'd be surprised how much money you'll save out when you go to your house, fix your sandwiches, fix your whatever you have, take your lunch, take your chips, take it to work with you. And the money you was going to spend at that restaurant that you was going to, which you probably don't need to go to, put it in a can. And see how much money that'll be at the end of the week. And be honest about it. And when you be honest about it, if that's enough money that you can send to help somebody, then do it. And just let the Lord know. I'm not storing this up for myself. I have food at home. I can eat at home. But in my normal time, I'm going to try to save. I'm going to sacrifice for somebody else. Because normally I would go to McDonald's, I would go to Burger King, whatever restaurant, uh, whatever you want to go, whatever you think you want to go. Chili's, whatever you may go to your place. Take that money, rather than go out and dine and profile and style it, take that money and put it in the can. You can pay $15 for lunch a day, put it in the can. Take some tuna sandwiches along with you. Probably need to cut some weight anyway. Take some chips, take some water with you. Read your Bible in the car. Stay still. You ain't got to roll out with the barrage of people. Stay away from some time. Boy, if you still want to go out and still hold a 15, going to match it, then match it. Or spend 15 or match 15. Okay, cool. You got it like that, then roll like that. But this man required that he would put, he would tear down all his older bonds and build greater bonds just because he want to covet everything. Why not just take what you can't cover and give to somebody? You got enough already. Because you're telling yourself you're going to build bigger barns or store more, so the barns you already got got something. It's the same thing I'm talking about housing, cars, and homes, and clothing. You already got stuff. Why do you want more stuff? That's just simply greed for an individual to think like that. I want mine to be bigger. I want mine to be better, so I'm going to do more and more and more to let everybody know I got it like this. I see some people with five full cars in the yard. For what? You can't drive all of them at once. The word of God comes over and he says in the 19th verse, And I will say to my soul, Thus has much good laid up for my years or many years. Take these, ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Uh-oh, you done messed up, partner. The word of God talks about in that 19th verse, that this man declared in the creed, the truth was, his soul really had nothing, you think about it. In fact, you know, everything that was provided for him came from God. So he really didn't own anything. But this is how people think sometimes. They feel that when God blesses them, they it's mine, 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 and all mine. No, it don't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And sometimes the Lord gives you a little bit of something just to see what you're going to do with it. So we understand the purchase of this particular scripture. God provided everything he needed. For the soul in the process, and like Mitch, really, not really most Christians, regrettably, fall into this same category. They go out and they feed the soul, which is the flesh, the things that they so desire and want to have. They go out and do that. Whether you go buy you another fifty dollar, I hundred dollar pair of heels, you go buy you another pair of gaiters, another nice suit, another this that, and go go buy somebody else. Go on the streets, hey man, look here, I want to take you to church on Sunday. If you can't take them to church on Sunday, then guess what? Hey, man, I want you to go to my stream program. Whatever you have. Or if you can't get them a stream program because of COVID and COVID, hey, look here, I want to give you a, I'm going to give you a, a little pass. I'll go get something to eat. Just get you a pot of made 12 or 13 gift cards, $25 a piece. And just give them to them. You'll feel much better about that. 
Because probably at home, you're going home to a roof to lay in, air conditioned, car, home, whatever you have. You don't need another car. A person of greed, no, I want to be stunting, dude. You don't need another house either. Be satisfied with the one you have, like your mother told you back in the day. We've been in the house for 40 years. Same old house. Some of them got the same phone number. Just 10, just 10 to 3 different preferences, 3 different codes on it. And this is how we find ourselves falling in to covetousness. Because we never think about anyone else. We're always thinking about ourselves. We never want to give. And I'm telling you, when you give man and woman God, it ain't always got to be to a brick and a mortar. Let me tell you, let me break that out to you. You can give a St. Jude's. I was talking to a little girl the other day who was a cheerleader. She had cancer. Hair was shaved off, eyebrows shaved off, and she just as nice as she wanted to be. She was a cheerleader. And she's cheerleading. And I just talked to her nice as she wanted to be. And that's why I looked at her. I said, that's what my money given to. To help young ladies like her for she can come out and be a survivor and be able to enjoy having that dream to be a cheerleader. So I came back again and I see another person in the same situation. Maybe a young man is te- uh, suffering from some kind of sickle cell. They got programs you give in the sickle cell, cancer programs, women having ovarian cancer, people having breast cancer. We got that month coming up. I'm going to see how many people are going to give to that. Where they going to give $4 or $5 of that. We're already getting you ready. You should be saving up all year. You should be taking that dollar, throwing it in the shoebox. You can get all your chains together. And whatever you have laying around, shouldn't be laying around. You should be giving it anyway. Give it to breast cancer. Get an ovarian cancer. Get a colon cancer. Prostate cancer. You ain't got to give it to a church. Who told you that? The Bible said, give and it should be given unto you. Shake it down and run over God given to your bosom. That's real when you're doing it the right way. The Bible comes over here and it comes on this particular 20 verse. God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul be required of thee. The brother's in trouble. And that's going to be a lot of things that going to happen to a lot of people. You're going to gain all the things of the world. And it's going to come down to time. You all of a sudden, it's going to, it's going to come like a thief in the night. You don't even know it's going to come. In. All of a sudden, you're going to be moving and just going to freeze up. And you ain't going to know what happened. The Bible declares to you, God says that when a fool moves in this particular uh, direction, the way they move and they find themselves in these kind of things, the Bible says it's just a matter of time before that particular train comes their way. When you find yourself giving and loving and trying to spread love and do more for other people, love will come back to you. But in this particular case, this man wanted to harbage and cover everything for himself. Set back, be merry, and have many things he needed to eat on. You just chill. But the word of God said, no, you got to twist it. This night your soul is required. Then who shall you give these things to and who has provided? God is telling him right here. He says in the second verse, then who shall those things be which thou hast required? God had put them in his hand. He didn't do anything. The ground brought forth fruit abundantly. You may have labored it a little bit, but that ain't nothing. God called it to come forth. The same thing I talk about over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul and Apollo. And it's the same thing in the ministry. We look at people in the ministry as they're some kind of hierarchies. Some people have got the capability to have some kind of special uh, whatever they want to have. And God said the word of God is the word of God. You can hear the word of God to anyone. As long as it's an unadulterated word of God, I don't care who you are and what position you're in. Nobody says you got to be an archy position to give the word of God out to somebody and let them know that they can be saved, transformed, changed, and delivered. No, we want to think so. We got to have a certain person behind a pulpit. We can only get saved by a person who has a robe or a ring or a title or position or alphabet behind his name, whatever you want to call it. That two people can't come together and tell you, hey, look, let's pray for one another that we may get saved. And then let us require and pray that the Lord find somebody that will baptize us. And that we continue to serve the Lord and go forth. And then we go and do the same for others. Don't let people run you through the ringer, making you feel you're not able to do the things that God called you to do. The gift was given to you. It wasn't given for you by man. Men that will help your character. Men like myself and other men like myself. We're there to get many people out of the playing field as we can. 
and making sure they're going to do a look at the work that's going to bring forth the abundance of the kingdom of God. The Bible declared the creed. He said in the 20th, your soul is required. You want to store up riches and you didn't save nothing in the behalf of anyone else. You only thought about yourself. The word of God declares on that 21st verse. So is it he that lieth up treasure for himself. Ends not his riches, God. Look what he said. So is he that lieth up treasures for himself. And is not riches toward God. That's a problem. You loan up riches for yourself. And you're not looking at it toward God. Or trying to get the riches to try to help somebody who need help. God provided you for it. And you felt like you didn't want to do that. I'm going to get into the rest of this. Coming on Tuesday, I'm going to go back in the rest of part of this verse. I'm going to go this particular verse. I'm going to go down here to, from the uh, 22nd to the 27th. But Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. For this time, this moment, in the name of Jesus, we always decree in and declare through the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just believe, Father God, without a shadow of a doubt, there can be no weapons formed against us that can prosper and nothing could be able to stand. We just ask you, Father God, according to your will, your purpose, your power, that you look over us, Father God. You keep us, Father God, as we go forth. And Father God, even as we begin to pray, Father God, come into our mind and our hearts and our dreams. Give us the things we need that we may continue to go in the direction you want us to go in. Father God, look over my beautiful wife. Look over my whole team in the name of Jesus. Touch all those who help promote this team to go forth as we continue to spread universally with the power of God's word. Come with the illumination, the power of the spirit, declaring in the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Father God, I thank you. For my good friend, Anthony Stradick and his wife, having a bouncing baby, beautiful boy today, I declare that that baby be healthy, go strong, and he'll grow up to be a fine young man that will preach the gospel for the kingdom of God. And every riches that that baby may need and have has already been given on to it. I declare the word, now pushing it to the heart of that young child right now, that no weapon be formed against that child that should prosper and nothing should be able to stand. To my young grandsons, Alonzo, to my son Alonzo, not only to my son Alonzo, to my beautiful daughter Amber, praying for them as always. To my good new, to my other grandkids, you know, Enzo and the Marquis, they they moving forward. They're getting bigger, and uh, those guys were looking so fly and so sharp the other day in their pictures. I was just man, who are these cats? These cats look like some little money G's. But hey, look, they're great young men. They're great young people. To my beautiful young daughter Marcella. Growing, it just it just growing. We just got to keep them pushing in the right direction. Teach and never one of you, but having the sons and daughters go out and enjoying their senior years, and getting self to go forth. Make sure they safe. Tell them what's right. It's a cold, calculated world out there, and they need your skills to help them move forward. Men and women, God, it's a blessing to be with each and every one of you here at HNOC Studios. And to then, hey, look, you guys take care. Y'all sleep right. <laughs>